they always said I'm wrong, but what they doing? Hey, I think they want me gone, but I ain't going away. They told me I was wrong. What's going on? I'm Tim for the Real Sports Talk here at Eagles Training Camp. They used to actually let you inside the facilities while they weren't practicing. They're not doing that anymore. That's why I'm doing this video outside the actual baseball field, the foul poles right there. Here at Lehigh University for Philadelphia Eagles Training Camp where we come every year to give you our NFL breakdown. This year it's just me and KJ couldn't make it, but uh, just me this year. I'm going to preview every division, give you awards, a Super Bowl prediction, everything. So you're going to want to stick around and see all this. We'll start though in the NFC East, the division of my team, the Philadelphia Eagles. And I can tell you one thing, I'm not going to be a homer in this. I'm not going to say the Eagles are going to go 16-0 and win the Super Bowl. We'll see what my prediction is. You'll see what my prediction is as I go along. But I think that you'll find that I've done a ton of work. I stayed up all night last night doing research on the accusations, everything that the teams did in the offseason. Based off what they did last year, I've watched pretty much every game that goes on in the NFC East between the Giants, Cowboys, and Redskins, and Eagles. So I already had a pretty good understanding to begin with, but I refreshed myself. It's tough to get back into talking about football when you haven't done it in a while. I'm ready to do that right now. We're going to start in fourth place, and I'm going to go down to first place. We'll start with the Washington Redskins, who had the number two overall pick. They traded up, traded a lot, but I think it will be worth it as they drafted Robert Griffin III in the offseason. They also signed Pierre Garçon and Josh Morgan. They did lose some cap room because of uh, a deal that they have with the Cowboys. I'm, I forget exactly what it was, but uh, them and the Cowboys both lost a decent amount of cap room. You know, though, that in the end, the cap room is not a huge hit when you have Dan Snyder as your owner for the Washington Redskins. Josh Morgan's a nice pickup. He's not going to be a starting wide receiver, but he'll be a nice third or fourth guy to throw in there. Pierre Garçon, they paid him a lot of money. Pierre Garçon actually got more money than guys like Deshaun Jackson. But I think it's a piece that you had to bring in, whether it works out or not. You need to show a lot of faith in your young quarterback, RG3. You need to add him another weapon. Chris Cooley's not as good as he used to be. Santana Moss is still a nice receiver. But now that you can move him to the number two option, have Pierre Garçon as your number one, and Pierre Garçon's still pretty young. I like this move, and I think that the Redskins, something a lot of people don't realize is how good this defense has been. London Fletcher is like an ageless wonder at middle linebacker. They brought him back on a two-year deal, even though he's 36, 37 years old. He led the NFL in tackles last year. He was up with among the leaders in tackles last year. And this is overall a pretty solid defense. Brian Arakpo. A, a few names on, de on this defense that really kind of scare people, D'Angelo Hall. It's a nice overall defense. It's been for a few years. The problem's really been the offense because they haven't had a great running game and they haven't had a quarterback. The quarterback, they figured it out. I think RG3 is one of the guys that's the future of the NFL. These big quarterbacks who can not only run but throw. It's like adding in a Ben Roethlisberger type thrower to a Michael Vick type runner. Him and Cam Newton. Something like that. And the thing is that the difference between him and a Michael Vick is I think he'll be able to stay more healthy because he has a better team around him than what Vick had when he was in Atlanta early on in his career. And he also, I think, is more skilled farther along in his maturity process than Michael Vick was at that time. So if you look at what the Redskins should do this year, I think that the one thing people are leaving out is the running backs. You've got Tim Hightower, Evan Royster, and uh, Roy Hulu. I think Roy Hallou showed me a lot of possible stuff last year. Evan Royster was one of the best running backs in the history of Penn State. And then uh, Tim Hightower, I think, is a nice complimentary piece. I think they'll find one of those three guys will work out very well. I have the Redskins at 7-9 and nine in the fourth place. In third place, I have the Dallas Cowboys at 8-8. Eight and, eight. and the thing to remember here is how hard the schedules are in the NFC East this year. They're extremely hard. And last year, the Giants won the division at 9-7. and seven. The Cowboys and Eagles were 8-8, eight and, eight, and the Redskins, I think, were 6-10, and 5-11, and 11, something like that. So no one in this team, or no one in this division, even though it actually had the Super Bowl winner, no one in this division last year ran away with it. It was a close, toughly fought division that last year really was not their best overall talent year. The Cowboys added in Brandon Carr, the cornerback from the Chiefs. I like that pickup. Kyle Lorton, they drafted Morris Claiborne with the sixth overall pick, which they traded up to get. Uh, Doug Free, who really struggled at that left tackle position, is moving over to the other side of the line. 
and they will have Tyron Smith as their left tackle now. I like that move because Doug Free just was not protecting the blind side of Tony Romo enough. He was taking a lot of hits. And I think that Tony Romo may very well be the best overall quarterback in this division, but they don't have a great running attack. And for whatever reason, things just don't seem to work out to the, for the Cowboys more than an 8-8, eight 9-7 eight, type season pretty much since they've gone 13-3 and that first year with Wade Phillips. I think the Cowboys go 8-8, eight and eight, but I think it's an 8-8 eight and eight where they have a really solid season. They're in the playoff run, not an 8-8 eight and eight like what the Eagles did last year where they started 4-8 and, and they end up 8-8. Eight eight. In second place, and I know I'm going to get killed for this, the Giants. I have them at 9-7. and seven. I think, this, again, this is an extremely tough division. Sean Rodgers, they bring in. He was coming off a broken leg, and I, I got a lot of this uh, information from the Bleacher Report. Shout out to them. He was coming off a broken leg last season. But if you remember before with the Browns and the Lions, he was a really solid uh, defensive lineman, one of the better tackles in the league. They got him for virtually nothing. They get Martellus Bennett, the tight end from the Cowboys, as they lost Jake Ballard to uh, the Patriots through a waiver deal. I think Martellus Bennett is actually an improvement over Jake Ballard. Jake Ballard made some nice catches and showed potential, but he dropped a lot of balls in crucial spots as well last year. They had Keith Rivers, which... Uh, no one really talked about they had the linebacker Keith River, Rivers from uh, the Bengals, and they restructured with OZU Manure, so essentially they kind of got that out of the way. What the Giants do so well, and the reason that they don't need to make a ton of off-season moves, is they rotate people in. Guys like Victor Cruz replacing Steve Smith. People thought it was a huge deal when they lost Steve Smith to the Eagles, and then Victor Cruz comes out as a Pro Bowl wide receiver. By the way, I think Victor Cruz has another big season. From everything I've heard and seen from uh, Giants training camp, he looks like he's as good as he was last year, if not better. And then uh, the, the only loss that they really took in the offseason was losing Mario Manningham and Brandon Jacobs. They both go to the 49ers. Mario Manningham is a guy that you can put in the slot. He's a good receiver. He's a nice third or fourth option. But they're not going to die without Brandon J or without him. And Brandon Jacobs is kind of at the end of his line, and I think he had run his course with the Giants. Look, he won two Super Bowls there. The year that they won the Super Bowl the first time, he had one of the best seasons of his career, probably the best season. I think they go 9-7. and seven. I think it comes down late to this in this division. If the Eagles will go 10-6 and six and win it, they pick up D'Amico Rines, Fletcher Cox, Demetrius Bell, and Vince Young leaves them, thank God, to the uh, Buffalo Bills. They also picked up Trent Edwards, who is unlikely to make the roster. D'Amico Rines, this team's been looking for a linebacker. Fletcher Cox helps this to be solidified as one of the top five defensive lines in the entire NFL. The Giants have one as well. But you put Jason Babin on one side. We interviewed Jason Babin on this show before. You put Trent Cole, and then you got Colin Jenkins, who actually had a really good year last year. Then you got a few different guys. You got Anthony Dixon, uh, Fletcher Cox, and uh, Mike Patterson. All three of those guys together, and Fletcher Cox, ultimately that will be his spot. All three of those guys together is going to be a really, really nice defensive line for this team. I have the Eagles at 10-6 and six winning this division because a lot went wrong for them that I don't see going wrong. Michael Vick threw a lot of interceptions last year, but a lot of them off tip balls and just the kind of plays that you get a season like that every few years. Deshaun Jackson had the worst year of his career by far last year, even though the numbers didn't indicate it if you watched it, he did. And Lashawn McCoy is a top five running back in the NFL. I understand that they lost Jason Peters, but Demetrius Bell came from the Buffalo Bills where Jason Peters came. You can't replace an all-pro running back, but I think what he's going to be able to do is hold it down. Jason Peters likely out for the season. I think he tore his Achilles. I think he will be a solid overall left tackle for the Eagles this year. He's not going to be an all-pro like Jason Peters was last year. But uh, the, th the important thing to remember is that the left tackle is not Michael Vick's blind side because he's left-handed. Todd Harriman's who shifted to the right side last year, had a career year. I think one of the more underrated linemen in the NFL. A lot's going to come down also to, the, uh, to Hen Alex Henry, the kicker. Can he do have a better season than he did last year? He's one of the best college kickers ever. Struggled in his first year with the Eagles at replacing David Akers. I'll be back to recap and preview every single NFL division. Stay tuned and leave your predictions in the comments below. Did the Eagles win? Do the Redskins or Cowboys win? Do the Giants win? Who do you think wins? Follow me on Twitter at CashKelly underscore TRST, and I'll see you guys later. Just a little bit around the corner from fear. Be there next year. Where I'm going.